starve him. If you mess with his blood sugar, we could set off another rage. You can take him. I need to eat. As soon as we get a urine sample, we can leave you alone. Here's your damn sample. Hey. Poor guy got so hungry that he got knocked back a few generations and started marking territory that wasn't his. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 3, Episode 23, The Jerk. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House videos. This will be Episode 81. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. So, you want me to explain how you just lost? Come on. It's called speed chess. Goodbye. Good game. Did he just smack him in the head with the chess timer? Must have thought he was playing wizard's chess. We can see why this episode is called The Jerk, but what I'd be very interested to know is whether the way he was acting during the match is a recent development or something long-standing. If it's more recent, that could point to possible infections or even small strokes. Longer-standing could be just his personality or a neurodegenerative process. Either way, it seems like that outburst of anger was sudden, but has that happened before or is this the first time? The dad seemed pretty surprised by it, so that indicates it's the first time. There is another clue here though, the extreme headache. It could be more than this, but we all know that extreme pain can cause people to do strange things. It reminds me of a case published in 2021, Alpha Psychiatry. A 36-year-old male had been getting the intention to attack others for five years, which always started as an unbearable headache. During one such headache, he tried to strangle an ender man's life who was just sitting next to him in the cafe. After the attack, he couldn't remember what he'd done and was shocked by it. On further assessment though, the team did find abnormalities in his frontal lobe, which can control aggression and personality. That's where I bet the problem is with this patient, but we need some more clues. Your head still hurt? You a moron? What are you, some kind of med student? He's been this way since he became a teenager. I like this kid. MRI was clean, no frontal lobe tumor, and the tox screen showed no trace of coke or amphetamine. He's having cluster headaches. Start him on blood thinners and give his noggin transcranial magnetic stimulation. Of course House like this kid. He's finally met someone that makes him look nice. You may say this is a manufactured character, but I met a 45 year old female patient who I'd never met before come into the room and before saying anything else, tell me, you're sure you're not a med student? In situations like that though, it's mainly because patients have been through a rough ride, seeing multiple people without getting their problem fixed. If something like that happens to you, don't take it personally. It's just as Don Miguel Ruiz says in the international best-selling book, The Four Agreements, People are the way they are because of them, not because of you. So what makes this patient the way he is? We know that he was a vegetarian until a few months ago. No changes in behavior since the new diet. He's unsurprisingly been in 17 fights this semester, has pain across his body, and had this behavior since his teens. We know that house titles always give us a clue, and this episode is called The Jerk, but they could have used unfriendly, antisocial, or House's long lost son. What if the jerk title has a double meaning? Yes, he's not quite the second coming of Gandhi, but he could start developing muscle jerks as well. We might call them myoclonic jerks, and they could be a sign of epilepsy syndromes like Lennox Gastaut, or progressive myoclonic epilepsy, which can also cause brain impairment. It can also be a part of some pretty nasty infections, including CJD or mad cow disease, and metabolic disorders with salt abnormalities like low calcium. I definitely want to know the results of these blood tests, get an EEG, but I'm going to be bold here and go with myoclonic epilepsy as my first diagnostic guess. I'm not too convinced by this cluster headache theory, but, but regular viewers know that I've been wrong before occasionally. 50 bucks to whichever of you steps up and treats this brat. I'll do it. The magnetic pulses activate nerve cells, which will hopefully squelch the head pain. I thought I was a bad mother because I hated him. I had a job interview lined up at New York Mercy yesterday. Didn't happen because apparently I called to cancel. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Oh, almost forgot. I need to give a 16-year-old magic mushrooms to treat a cluster headache. Seems like the unproven magnetic pulse treatment didn't quite reverse our patient's symptoms, so House is going a bit off-piste 
with psilocybin. That route does have some legs though, as a 2006 study showed that the drug, which is the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, worked in 93% of cluster headache cases. Why is that important? Well, cluster headaches are so severe that some people who've had them bang their head against the wall because that pain is less than that of the headache. It's a problem that's plagued humanity for a long time as there are reports found from ancient Egypt papyri as early as 1600 BC. Accurate detail though wasn't found until the 1700s when Gerard van Swieten described a patient with tearing and reddening of one eye that kept returning predictably day to day. Scientists to this day are still not sure what causes cluster headaches but believe it's related to histamine or serotonin release. Psilocybin acts on the serotonin receptors, but it's not sure how its headache relief is mediated, especially since it's never been officially recognized as a treatment for cluster headaches. We have to be very careful with drugs like that, as for some patients it can trigger anxiety, panic, and even paranoia. Although repetitively feeling like you're being kicked in the head, could probably do that too. Question for you smart people, what is the drug we would recommend to help with cluster headaches first line? Answers down below. I assume you've considered he could have a psychogenic experience, possibly suffer a fit of severe paranoia. I have now. And if the mushrooms don't work? The next step would be a type of brain surgery. What I got here is the opposite of pain. Man, you're hot. Check it out. He has undersized testes. So what could make our jerks junk look like it's been ripening in the sun for too long? We know testicles produce a hormone which is aptly named testosterone, and so when something outside the testicles takes over that function, the testes no longer need to and become a shadow of their former selves. So what outside the testicles could be producing the hormones? I'm thinking things that could have been triggered around the start of puberty as well, since the mum said that's when his aggressive behavior started. We know that adrenal glands can produce testosterone, so if you had a cancer of the adrenal cortex, that can definitely shrink the testes and cause the aggression. That would be my first diagnostic guess. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia could cause similar problems, but due to a genetic mutation, which is inherited, that would lead to high levels of testosterone and low levels of cortisol. Usually that would be present at birth, but in a male, it could be missed. Neither of those really explain the headaches though. And we know that the release of hormone from the testicles is stimulated by glands in the brain, like the pituitary gland and hypothalamus. A pituitary tumor could interfere with the brain stimulation of the testes, causing the headache and shrinking the testicles. Then it doesn't quite explain the aggressive behavior though. Let's find out more. Craniopharyngioma fits the symptoms. Biopsy the Bratz pituitary. I was right about the cluster headaches. Jaundiced. His liver's shutting down. All we need to do is figure out what caused the liver failure. He started eating red meat a few months ago. Unless he's been buying cuts of mad cow, his body would have no problem metabolizing it. Did she just say mad cow? I said mad cow. All we're missing is the jerk and that first theory I mentioned will be coming true. But what actually is mad cow disease? It's caused by a particularly nasty abnormal protein called a prion. They can accumulate in the brain after eating contaminated meat and cause irreversible damage to neurons. They're not sensitive to antibiotics, heat or cooking, so we have no treatments for them. Patients with the condition will pass away within one year as well. It's pretty rare running at around one death in a million people each year and for many patients the source isn't quite clear there have been reports of people getting it from blood transfusions as well i hope it's not that though as if it is then it means our jerk won't be jerking for much longer or maybe house would manage to get him a brain transplant it seems like his mom wouldn't mind that too much what if he had an otc deficiency body can't metabolize nitrogen damages the liver run a hamburger test i'll double your salary you work in parallel with house It'll be your practice. Separate staff, separate cases. No, I can't work here. OTC deficiency, of all the rare conditions in the world, that is in my top three that I would least want to have. It massively limits what you can eat as food with even slight amount of protein could tip you over the edge. It reminds me of the case of Rohan Gadania, who was a 16 year old boy whose dad thought he could have used some bulk on him. After giving a protein shake to his son to help with that, the father triggered a series of events that ended Rohan's life. It's because he had undiagnosed ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency, which is an enzyme necessary to break down ammonia. 
As its levels grow in the blood, it can become toxic to our nervous system. The team are trying to test for this by giving our patients some protein and seeing what happens. All of this while Foreman seems to be getting some serious offers here to try and get him to stick around. It would be epic to see how Foreman would do case by case with his own practice and whether his more ethical style yields any better or worse results than House. Of course, Foreman's practice would do better in the real world while House's department gets closed down by entire trenches of complaints, death threats, and more malpractice suits than a witch doctor on shrooms. This whole cancelling Foreman's interview thing- I had a job interview lined up at New York Mercy yesterday. Didn't happen because apparently I called to cancel. It does raise attention to one of the hardest parts of working as a doctor, difficult colleagues. I remember when I was first qualified and I was doing rounds with a consultant on a weekend, the amount of work to do was overwhelming while I was getting bleeped about sick patients. That consultant wanted to finish their round so they could go home and I had to follow around writing down jobs to do and doing admin. As soon as the round ended, a patient needed to go home and so she asked me to do a discharge letter. I replied saying that I was concerned about a few patients that I needed to go and review and she said JFDI. JFTI, just effing do it. If only that was the sole incident of disrespect. Yes, it's a high pressure situation. Yes, we are understaffed and underfunded, but that isn't an excuse to forget our manners and treat each other with anything less than respect and grace. I thought it'd be fun to work on my book with him. It's these white marks, you know. A psychic once told me that I'm psychic. <laughs> This reminds me of a time I was in A&E and a 27 year old patient came into the hospital at 3 a.m. concerned about his sunburn. His main worry is that he has a circular white mark in the middle of his chest which hasn't burned up like the rest of his skin. There are two possibilities. Either he has left a beer can on his chest while he went to sleep, or he's the real life Tony Stark. I'm not sure how well stocked the pharmacy is in arc reactors, so hopefully it's option one. When I told the patient what it was, he did find it quite amusing as at least he did it to himself rather than being turned into a piggy bank by his own child. I hope this kid's hamburger test goes well, otherwise next step is going hunting in his brain with a scalpel. He doesn't have OTC deficiency. Starve him. Diabetic steatosis would screw up his liver. If you mess with his blood sugar, we could set off another rage. You can take him. I need to eat. As soon as we get a urine sample, we can leave you alone. Here's your damn sample. Hey. Poor guy got so hungry that he got knocked back a few generations and started marking territory that wasn't his. In all fairness, I'd start smashing lamps too if someone starved me overnight when they could have just done an ultrasound and a blood test. See, it would be pretty hard for this patient to have a diabetic fatty liver like House thinks without diabetes. We can check for diabetes using a test called a HbA1c, which shows how much glucose your blood cells have been exposed to over the last three months. If it's high, then most commonly that means you have insulin resistance. That can be related to poor diet and obesity that can also increase the risk of fat around your liver. That fat over time can lead to liver failure if things like high cholesterol, diet, exercise, and sugar levels aren't controlled. Either way, what could cause all of these patients' symptoms as he seems to have so many organs involved? First the brain, then the liver, now the kidneys. This constellation does fit well with autoimmune conditions, and I know it's never lupus, but this potentially could be the one, although I'm not totally convinced. It could, could also be polyarthritis nodosa, which is another type of vasculitis, but none of those really explain the small testicles. The small testicles fit more with Wilson's disease or hemochromatosis. In Wilson's disease, there is an accumulation of copper in the body due to mutation, and the psychiatric element can be prominent as well. Team ruled it out because there's a screening test called seruloplasmin, which was negative, but that can be unreliable. 24 hour urinary copper or ideally a liver biopsy could diagnose it and that would be my definite next step. All right, I'm going for it. That's gonna be my third diagnostic guess. Bloody urine was caused by kidney failure. He's on dialysis. Well, could be hepatic fibrosis or MCAT. Get the sequencing primers, see if it's one of the ones we can treat. No markers for hepatic fibrosis and nothing for MCAT. He's got a partial HPRT enzyme deficiency. 
means you could have Kelly Siegmiller syndrome. I'm going to stress this kid until he bites off a finger. Kelly Siegmiller, oh, that is a very spicy diagnosis I've never even heard of. So I had to look this one up. This one is so rare that it doesn't even have its own Wikipedia page. It all starts with this enzyme HPRT, which is important for the metabolism of a type of compound called purines, which usually get recycled in the body. When you can't recycle them, then they get broken down into uric acid, which can be a toxic byproduct if it accumulates. When there's a full deficiency of that enzyme, you get a syndrome called Lesch-Nihan, which causes excessive self-mutilation by compulsive biting of the lips and fingers. On occasion, that biting can be so severe that they have to remove the teeth to stop the damage. Thankfully, this patient only has a half deficiency of the enzyme, which causes Kelly Sigmiller syndrome instead. The compulsions to self-mutilate are way milder than Lesch-Nihan, and it can cause all the patient's symptoms. House wants to trigger the self-mutilation by stressing the patient out, which to be fair, could have some factual basis. On the accuracy front, I'll allow it. Who are you? Man, who's gonna kick your ass all over this chessboard. I'm gonna give you this shot of adrenaline. Passive approach, sign of a coward. Sicilian defense, sign of an idiot. Check. You can't win. And is a simple evil jerk with amyloidosis. Nerve biopsy was clean, no evidence of amyloidosis. We dumped one symptom but forgot to add one. Interesting, House is having his Eureka moment and I wonder what it is. We still haven't seen the jerk like I predicted, so what if that extra symptom House is thinking is something to do with chess? Like, maybe House didn't win because there's someone fighting in the patient's corner, like an auditory hallucination. You get rid of personality disorder and add psychosis to the mix. We also know that his diet switched from veggie to non-veg just before these symptoms started and we were distracted by red meat as the obvious one, but what if it was overconsumption of fish that could have caused this? Like a disease called Mad Hatter's caused by mercury poisoning. It typically can cause abnormal irritability and people in the history books described those patients as Mad as a hatter, which definitely fits. It can be caused by excessive consumption of canned tuna, mackerel, certain types of sea bass as well. Treatment would be with chelation and that would fix his symptoms. If I got that right, I would be so annoyed because I have no diagnostic guesses left, but let's find out. That hurts, right? <laughs> you hold the pieces that way because you can't bend your thumb. It's iron. Got hemochromatosis. If you'd stayed off the meat like your mom said, you'd have half as much iron and be twice less almost dead. It's going to be a long and annoying life. I'd have lost the exchange but won the game. I was bluffing. You lost. Jerk. Run the test again. Looks like you're in for an all nighter. Hemochromatosis, damn, I said that, or Wilson's, but decided to go for Wilson's. Fair play, House, you got me good there. It's not an uncommon condition as it's present in around one in 400 people, depending on ethnicity. Most people with it don't even know they have it, but for some it can cause massive buildups of iron, which can cause memory disturbance, liver disease, small testicles, and joint pains. It's not known to cause personality disorders though, so, that's on the patient. The treatment is basically taking blood, which can get rid of the excess iron and draw it out of the tissues. I was right about the jerk having a double meaning, but it wasn't as spicy as my theory as it was just House and the patient. Overall, really fun episode. I'm gonna say 8.5 out of 10 entertainment. So 7.5 out of 10 accuracy and eight out of 10 diagnosis. This episode doesn't make full sense though until you watch the previous one where blood bleeds with no trace.